before we get started, I'm on Cameo. It's that thing where celebrities and YouTubers and stuff can record personal messages for you. Birthdays, holidays, pep talks, general greetings. I can do them. I will say words at you or a loved one. If you're interested, just head to Cameo.com slash Arlo stuff. Interesting. Hello, my friends. I'm here to bring you rapid fire. I'll try to be rapid fire. I'm not always that rapid fire. I'm going to try to do rapid fire takes on a whole bunch of games from Summer Game Fest. Um, I'm not going to be going through every game in every presentation. I'm going to try it like the, the main, the big ones. I couldn't do all of them because there are just too many. Way, way, way too many. So here we go. Let's talk about some games. First, we have the, the Summer Game Fest main show. They start off with the reveal of Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. Yeah, I know a lot of like, you know, big Prince of Persia fans hoping for the next big AAA 3D game or whatever, you know, disappointed. But yeah, I don't know. This It's like 2.5D, Metroidvania, at least elements. Looks cool. We don't get a lot of AAA Metroidvania games. We gotta take what we can get. This looks cool. <laughs> the combat looks really cool. The abilities look cool. Yeah, I've got my eye on this one. Mortal Kombat 1, uh, I don't follow the Mortal Kombat games. I will say, though, the environments here are just stunning. Simply stunning. These backgrounds, they are incredible. Also, I don't, I don't know how they deal with it, like, in-world, but I love how it's just like, I'm crunching your bones, I'm cutting you in half, and then it's like, yeah, I'm fine, though. I mean, it's, it's all right. Path of Exile, I've never played before, but I've heard really amazing things about it and its devs and community and all that stuff. So Path of Exile 2 looks cool. Nicolas Cage coming to Dead by Daylight. Why not? Why not? That picture of him, though, looks absolutely nothing like him. Not, not a thing. Witchfire, still looking really, really cool. As I keep saying, just like first person shooters without traditional guns and stuff, like I'm there. That looks really great. This game has got a very strong, very distinct visual style and I love that. We got another look at Remnant 2 and uh, yeah, this is another one. This really just like, it's got your pretty traditional gunplay stuff, but then it's mixing. It's a really interesting mix of that and then just like weird fantasy, very strange looking monster. Monsters. Then there's even like robots in it at some point. So I don't know. It's it's another one that seems very uh, Very unique in a lot of ways. I don't know if it's quite my cup of tea, but like yeah I can really appreciate just its whole vibe Sonic Superstars. Wow. What can I say? Looks great. Looks super good a little worried that our zest is involved <laughs> But uh, no, I don't know. It, it looks really good. It's another stab at just a modern but like straight-up 2d Sonic and uh I, everyone seems to be saying that everyone who's played it says it's really amazing. I'm looking forward to it. Looks super fun. I wouldn't have chosen that name if I'm going to be nitpicky. That makes it sound like another, like, collection. That's what I thought it was at first. It's like, no, it's like a, it's a new Sonic game. So, yeah. We got a, oh, we got a beautiful new trailer for Lies of P. I didn't want to watch too closely. I kind of half watched it. I don't want to see everything, but like, oh, it looks so good. Every single thing. It looks so good. The monsters look so good. Oh, can't wait to play it. And there's a demo, so I can play it. Oh, I haven't played it yet. Ooh, should I play it? I should play it. Sandland, art by Kira Toriyama, obviously, uh, looks really good. I don't know anything about Sandland at all, um, but just what a visual style. Just like the, the use of the cell shading, the character designs, uh, the desert setting. I don't know. It's very... I don't even quite get what kind of game it is just kind of seems like an adventure you're running around you're fighting there's also vehicles i don't really know what the structure is but like i am interested that looks really cool throne and liberty never heard of this should i have heard of this never heard of it weird name not the best name looks really cool though yeah i don't know if it's like just a big fantasy game you know is it open world i don't really know but uh it's got some interesting looking stuff in the trailer looks uh you know, good good graphics and stuff we'll see how it turns out warhaven don't really have much to say about it's like a multiplayer fantasy kind of thing i don't know uh this looks all right <laughs> got another look at crash team rumble uh not my thing but i like the characters characters are all well designed that's the nice thing i'll say about that so we got a trailer for alan wake 2 at the playstation showcase here we got a little bit of a a gameplay demo from a thing from the trailer and uh, yeah, I'll say again it looks really interesting I still need to play the first one but I really really want to I've always wanted to 
Um, and this looks good. Weird. I don't know what's going on, but I want to know what's going on. So that, that's good. This trailer for Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2 uh, showed off a lot more uh, varied environments. I really like that. The environments, uh, that's really the, that's, that's what stood out to me. Just these environments are really incredible. Lots of really amazing amazing backdrops and it's of course it's really fun to watch them gunning down all the weirdo aliens and stuff very cool looking what's that cool mix of super stylish pixel art and 3d and stuff yeah you got me i'm there i'm sold yes your grace snowfall looks like you're a you're a king and it's cool pixel art yeah there you go i'm sold i want to play this <laughs> Sign me up. John Carpenter's Toxic Commando. Uh, I do think it is cool that John Carpenter is doing a game. I think that's neat. I don't think this is my kind of game, but there's some interesting stuff in here. Uh, I like how much you're shooting at huge crowds, like as you're moving on vehicles and stuff. That's kind of cool. There look like some, some pretty uh, interesting kinds of monsters in there. It's not all just like generic zombie stuff. So I like that. Some pretty cool stuff visually. Baldur's Gate 3. This wasn't really like a new trailer, more like a character introduction, kind of voice actor kind of thing. But I don't know. Game is still looking really fantastic. Super high production value just on like the character animations and stuff. Looks great. Pal World, I've heard about this, but this is the first time I've ever actually like really seen something on it. And I'm a little bit torn, I think. The idea is really cool. It's just like it's Pokemon, but it's also guns and it's like open world survival crafting game or whatever. And, and it's got a decent budget. Like it looks pretty cool. Um, I'm not a big fan of how many of the monsters look way too similar to actual like specific Pokemon. Not super into that, but overall, I don't know. It, it looks cool. I'm really curious to see how it turns out. Black Desert. I don't know much about it, but I don't know. Characters look cool. Gameplay looks pretty cool. Environments look cool. It looks cool. So another Lord of the Rings game. Interesting. There's just a bunch of them for some reason. This one, there are a lot of fantasy games that have dwarves in them, but not a lot where you get to just, it's just dwarves and you do what dwarves do and the mining and stuff. I think that's really cool. This one, some of the gameplay looks a little eh, like the combat doesn't look super good. Um, but I'm very excited about the idea. I mean, like, going back to Moria and reclaiming it, and then just the idea of, like, I hope there's actual systems where you're mining and building. I think that's cool. I'm not as interested in the combat and stuff. Just the idea of a story about Lord of the Rings dwarves in Moria. Oh my gosh. That sounds awesome. I had no idea this was even a thing until I saw this trailer, and it looks like it's got a lot of potential. I was a big Lord of the Rings fan when I was a teenager. So yeah, this is this has got me excited. Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis. I, I'm still just too disappointed about the whole like, oh, it's like a remake in the classic style, but it's a mobile game and yeah, I'm just not into it. So it was cool to get another look at, or a deeper look at Banisher's Ghost of New Eden because that was a very uh, mysterious title. We're just like, what, <laughs> you know, it's like the, the interesting story elements, but then like, is it a full game? And yeah, we got a little taste of the action. We got like combat and stuff. Um, and it looks pretty good, but uh, yeah, mostly it's just like that story that it's interesting. I'm really curious to see how it turns out. It looks cool. Like a dragon guy, Dan, the man who erased his name. I like it because at first I didn't know what it was and it all seemed very normal until the fighting starts. And it's like, yeah, I, also, I have magic though. So <laughs> that was pretty funny. Under the waves, narrative, sci-fi, underwater, marine stuff. I'm there. Looks great. Fay Farm, still looking pretty good. You know, it's cozy, farming. But then you got like your Animal Crossing elements, your fantasy elements. I don't know. Looks good. They had a little thing for Marvel Snap. I'm not into Marvel Snap, but it had a Pro ZD sketch in it. So awesome. Love it. King Arthur Legends Rise. I don't know. Just kind of it doesn't really stand out in any way. And the animation is like kind of just OK. And I guess. Oh, yeah, it's like a mobile game, I guess. Okay, yeah, I don't know. I got nothing. Wayfinder. I think I've seen trailers on this before. I don't know. It's all very, uh, it's a little too forgettable. It's that, yeah, that kind of like fantasy, but kind of colorful. I just like, it used to be a very unique style and now I've just seen it so many times. I just, I don't know, I'm not into it. Stellaris Nexus strategy game, space. Nice visuals, looks cool. Space Trash Scavenger, uh, only a quick little thing, but I really wanna learn more about this one. Looks kinda cool, scavenging trash and stuff. Little space person, I like it. Star Trek Infinite, I, I, I'm, unfortunately I had to record this before, I guess they're gonna reveal it a few days from now. I'm 
very curious though. I've always wanted a good Star Trek game. There's, there are Star Trek games. They've just never really, they've never really like appealed to me. I've always dreamed of having one that just was like, yes, I want this. And you know what? Gold Ducat is right there on the thing. So yeah, I got my hopes <laughs> pretty high for this one. Then we got to look at the new Twisted Metal show, <laughs> not game. Uh, looks awful. <laughs> Moving on. Lisfenga, the time shift warrior. Um, it looks pretty cool. The whole like multiple copies of yourself controlling time thing. It's not anything that like hasn't been done before, but it is kind of cool how like your copies, you just get more and more until you're kind of building a little army. I think that's a pretty clever idea. Immortals of Avium is looking pretty cool. There's not a lot about like the story and the characters that jumps out at me, um, but it's got some interesting ideas, mostly just visually, you know, big giant robot thing. And I don't know, just, some of the moves that you're doing. It's got some interesting elements. I'm really curious to know how this one uh, turns out. We had a cinematic trailer for a Fortnite thing that had a Transformers in it. Pretty sick. Final Fantasy fans, eating well. We got Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I So surprisingly, I wouldn't space these out more. So, I mean, like at least by like a year. I would expect multiple. <laughs> it's just very surprising. Um, but yeah, at this point, it has diverged so completely from the story that I know that I have no idea what's going on in any of this whatsoever. Looks cool, though. Love seeing Red 13 fight. So cool. Two discs. Two discs. Just like the good old days. So that is it for the main show. Now we're hitting Day of the Devs. Beastie Ball. Pokemon. Volleyball. It's a turn-based RPG. Cute art style, looks very, very interesting. Some of the designs of the beasties themselves are incredibly charming, really like it. Hyperlight Breaker, looking really cool. Visuals are really awesome. Some of these environments are great. The combat looks really snappy and good. Uh, love skating around everywhere. Not really into the whole roguelite thing, how like you never return to the same world twice. It's like, I just wanna like explore these cool places. I don't want it to be, uh, whatever, I won't go into that. It looks pretty cool, yeah, you know, we'll see if it's something that I'm actually into, but visually and everything looks very nice. Simpler Times looks really interesting. It's a little unpacking, it's a little, uh, little, little left, uh, you know, you got like picture taking elements, little puzzles, it's, you know, it's like an emotional, nostalgic kind of thing. Uh, looks really cool, got my eye on this one. Viewfinder, once again, coming along very, very nicely. It started with such a simple concept and now it's a full game and it looks really, really good. Not a big fan of the quips I'm hearing. I don't <laughs> quips about what's going. It kind of takes me out of the experience a little bit, but looks neato. Haunty, what a visual style. Just one of those ones you're like, that. that is unique right there. That is unlike something I have seen quite before. And uh, you're a ghost, you're haunting stuff. And uh, it's even watching this, it's kind of hard to get a feel for like how the game is going to feel to play. But uh I'm pretty darn interested. Cart Life, that's that's a really interesting looking game. It's uh you're you're running you're you're playing as street vendors and you're doing like the actual like day-to-day -day life of selling things to people, but it's also about the story and stuff. Probably a little too real for me, a little too like sad and stressful. <laughs> These people trying to trying to make a living, but it looks really interesting. I am honestly surprised we have not got I mean just Tony Hawk has been a thing for such a long time. Have we not gotten more games like this, like Hellskate? It's just like, it's skateboarding, but you're also like fighting monsters and stuff. And I don't know, it seems like a really, really cool kind of mix of genres. It seems to just work, just, even just looking at it, like it just looks like it works. I think that's really interesting. Henry Halfhead looks, uh, it looks interesting. It looks cute. You know, you're kind of just like possessing little objects around the house and just trying to do like regular household stuff. I don't think it really appeals to me. It looks like it would get a little, I don't know, even just like watching the footage. I don't want to say tedious because that sounds a little bit too harsh, but kind of like that. I, yeah, I guess it just doesn't really appeal to me. It does look really cute though. So this is this is a, my our first real good look at Cocoon created by lead designer uh, on Limbo and Inside. So, oh my gosh, like that's amazing. It's got this really cool concept where it's these orbs and each one is a world and you jump in and out of them. So it's like worlds within worlds within worlds and that's cool. And yet even now, even after this one, I don't get it. I don't get the point. 
and I don't know if I'm just missing it or what, but it's like, I don't actually know what going in and out of worlds and having them, like all the puzzles are just like puzzles you could do with a ball. I don't know what them being worlds is doing. And I kind of thought this was going to show that off and it doesn't. And it's like, and it says it's going to, and then it kind of, it's like, you could do interesting stuff with it, but it doesn't show any interesting stuff. So I still don't quite get it. I don't really see what the point of the whole worlds in worlds thing is. I'm kind of waiting to see like what it really does. Um, Maybe it's one of those things I won't know until I play it. Who knows? Visuals are nice. Like visually, it looks pretty cool. We saw a boss battle, but it was kind of just basic. It didn't even seem worth showing off. I, I don't know. I'm a little worried about this game. I feel like I, I want it to be really good, but I don't know. I'm not getting strong feelings uh, positively about it yet. Ette looks pretty cute. You're like, you're a painter and you're, I guess, in your imagination, painting the world around you. Uh, but then there's like an XP system and you level up, so that's a little bit surprising. And then it's got this whole like free paint thing where you're creating things out of the things that you have painted, they get added to your collection. It's a pretty cool idea. I don't know if I'm quite into it, but uh, it does look really pretty, really, uh, really fun idea. Summer Hill looks kind of cool. I, I wish we could have seen more, but uh, he did talk about it a little bit. And it's just like sheep herding, but it's also like, kind of fantasy it kind of seems like it kind of in a fantasy world and he says like gentle problem solving it's a puzzle game uh yeah i am interested to learn more eternites definitely not my kind of thing but i do think the idea of a dating action game is just funny so i appreciate that retro gadgets is definitely not something for me and my brain but i think it's incredibly cool it's like a, it's basically just like a gadget and hardware modding simulator kind of thing and it looks like you can make a lot of interesting stuff i think that's a very cool idea for a game mars first logistics another one that i am not nearly smart or patient enough for uh but it looks really cute looks like a fun little thing to play with you can build all sorts of silly stuff i like it salt sea chronicles that's another really interesting one very strong very unique art style uh, you're playing as like a whole ship's crew and it's like a it kind of looks post-apocalypse everything is flooded so everything is kind of like overgrown with ocean stuff it's like a story heavy game super duper interesting very unique so that was day of the devs now we move on to devolver digital which is always a good time just unhinged just <laughs> bizarre they put so much into these too so weird and so much fun. I love it. Let's get to the games though. Wizard with a Gun looks pretty cool. I uh, I think that the gameplay itself, something about the way the art style and like the feel of the game, it doesn't, uh, games like that, I can't even put my finger on it. It doesn't quite do it for me. Um, I don't know, but like mechanically it looks really cool though. Um, I mostly just love the characters, like the opening, the, the, the cinematic, the cutscene thing. Just the look of the characters with the eyes. It looks really, really cool. I love that kind of, you know, there's plenty of things that mix like the fantasy and the Western with the sci-fi. Um, this does it particularly well, I'd say. We got a, a deeper look at the Talos Principle too, with a lot of good uh, gameplay. And uh, gosh, it looks so cool. Looks really, really, really cool. And just like, I mean, it's not every day you get like that kind of first person walking sim-ish puzzle kind of game. Like there's so many of those on PC. You don't usually get one with a big budget that just looks like this. This is very unusual and it looks so cool. Baby Steps looks very funny. With any game like that where like the movement is like the whole, the whole shtick is just like, it's really hard to, yeah, you see it and you're like, I want to know what's so hard to move about it. I want, you know, like I want to, I want to experience it myself. So I'm very, very interested in this. Then they wrapped up by re revealing Human Fall Flat 2. Uh, which is not surprising. Apparently the first one has sold like 600 billion copies or something. So they didn't really show much off, but uh, yeah, I, I haven't played it, but it's cool that there is a two, I guess. Next is the Wholesome Direct, which I'm just so happy is a regular thing now. And uh, it starts off with Mineko's Night Market. Uh, we saw that, uh, I believe it, a Nintendo indie showcase. And uh, you know, it's just a quick little thing, but still looks really, really good. Visuals are super good. Pico is a game all about drinking tea with cats <laughs> pretty cute i that's all i got pretty cute spirit swap i, I want to say i've seen this one before not 100 percent sure but a interesting visual take on the whole 
matching blocks kind of puzzle game. Interesting. We got another in a, a growing, the growing genre of like cute animals playing sports games. We got a Button City Soccer Days. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't really know too much about it, but cute animals, they're playing soccer. What's not to love? Frogs are in. Frogs are big right now. Frog song looks good. Um, I, I need to see more like gameplay and stuff to know for sure. Uh, whether or not I want to play it, but uh, it looks really cute. The hand-drawn style of the characters is incredibly cute. I am a caterpillar, love games about bugs. You're a cute little caterpillar crawling around. I love how the camera like moves along with you, that shift in perspective. Very cute, very interesting. Bubblegum Galaxy, it's interesting. It's like a kind of a puzzly like strategy game where you're placing tiles to restore planets, but then like, you're also like working in a job with a bunch of like weird characters. So you got that whole element. Uh, very interesting. Sticky business. You're also running a business, but it's like about stickers. You're doing like graphic design and filling orders and stuff. That's another very, uh, it's a very unique idea. Moonstone Island. They don't show it off much, but they really just, I'm like, oh, it's like farming sim, but it's a farming sim creature collecting. It's card based uh and it's open world i guess yeah I, I don't know but it's like it's got really cool pixel art love all the little fantasy elements and stuff um i wish to know more i may want to play this game station to station i'm not a railway sim kind of guy but if i was gonna play one this would probably be the first one just the visuals the voxel style is just it's really really beautiful isn't it the palace on the hill um we don't see much, it's just, I guess it's a little like kind of romance kind of thing, but then it shows you kind of, build, you, yeah, I don't know. I actually don't really know what kind of game this is, but it's pretty though. Usagi Shima, this stinking game, this stinking game with these stinking bunnies, it's, it's too much. <laughs> it's too cute. Oh, I love it. Oh, it looks really, really cute. I can't even focus on the gameplay. I don't even know what kind of game it is. I just, those bunnies, I love it. Karma Zoo, very um, unique art style. It's like co-op kind of platformer thing uh, with people online. Uh, I don't know, it, it looks unique. I'll give it that. It really does look pretty, uh, just interesting. Flutter away, I guess you're looking at butterflies and writing a journal and I and petting capybaras I don't exactly know <laughs> exactly know what's going on but looks pretty Kamairu a frog refuge collecting frogs breeding frogs building stuff for your frogs another frog game another buildy life sim kind of thing all right looks great Baladins it looks really nice I, I like the art style it's like co-op like tabletop kind of RPG kind of stuff. Um, I can't see myself playing it, but it looks really nice. I, I do like the art style. A little to the left, cupboards and drawers. This game keeps going. It's just, it's that pleasant. I still haven't played it yet, but like, yeah, I don't know. Everything I see looks great. All right, you can guess. You can guess if I'm interested in this next one. Gordlets. You build a little town and it makes, it attracts little plant people with flowers on their heads. What do you think? What do you think? I'm super into this. I'm actually really interested in the idea how like you just build and it attracts them. You don't control them at all. You just kind of like make stuff and they come and interact with it. That seems really laid back and really nice. I am definitely getting that game. Lakeburg Legacies, it like it almost kind of looks like a town management kind of sim, but apparently it's like you're doing matchmaking. It's like a relationship management sim. Uh, it's an interesting idea. Loftia, uh, it's really like a, it's just like a teaser trailer. It didn't really show any gameplay, but uh, I don't know. I like games where you grow stuff and it's all cozy and nice. So there you go, I'll look at more. Okay, here's another one. Smushy, come home, little mushroom guy, look, researching different kinds of mushrooms, talking with snails and bugs and stuff. Yes, this is, this is another one. This is, this is my kind of thing. Venba, I love cooking. And I've not really played a lot of cooking kind of games. And this one has a really good visual style and I should definitely play it. Another look at Little Nemo and Guardians of Slumberland. Uh, yeah, still looks pretty cool. Uh, art looks really nice, the hand-drawn animation and stuff. Yeah, it's nice. I don't know if I'm into it, but it looks nice. Garden Witch Life, um, it looks nice. I don't know, something about it, it, the gameplay doesn't look super smooth. It does look very like cozy and nice. Um, but I don't know if it jumps out at me because there's a lot of like farming life sim kind of games out right now. 
I'm not as sure about this one. Orange season is kind of the same. It, it, it is just kind of like, it's another little farm sim one. Nothing about it is really jumping out at me. Not saying it's bad, I don't know anything about it, but uh, yeah, it doesn't really grab me. Surmount looks cute. It's like a climbing thing. It's kind of funny. You try to climb a mountain. <laughs> Grimoire Groves, it's another game, it's like I was saying earlier, it's just something about this specific kind of way that some games look that just for some reason does not mesh with me. So I don't know. Uh, however though, I, you know, it's like a farming sim, but it's got, got a very different visual style than you usually see. And I like how you're using magic. So there's a lot of very fun visual stuff here. Garden Buddies does look very cute. I'd like to see more of like the moment to moment gameplay. Um, but it's like less farming sim, more garden sim, you know, trying to make it look nice. I'm getting Viva Pinata vibes. It looks like you're attracting these cute little creatures or whatever, but then they got like mini games and stuff. Um, that's interesting. I'd like to know more. A Tiny Sticker Tail. I love the art style, love the characters. Looks really nice, clean visual style. Uh, it looks like it's kind of taken ideas from Paper Mario Sticker Star, uh, but making like maybe a fun game out of it. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. But no, it looks really cute. Sticking stickers all over. Yeah, I don't know, yeah. Ever Deep Aurora, wow. This one really, really smacked me across the face. This one looks fantastic. I mean, just when you're working with so few pixels, you know, like it's pixel art, but it's also like relatively low resolution pixel art. And yet you still have such a striking image, such a strong, unique visual style. Oh, just the vibes on this one. So, so good. Kibu is another one where it does, doesn't seem to be showing really any gameplay at all. I mean like gameplay elements, but like in a way that makes it look like a cinematic trailer. So I don't actually know what the game is like to play, uh, but at least the visuals are pretty. Magical Delicacy looks really nice. I, yeah, you, you make food and deliver it to people. Um, I would like to see more of the game. This shows only like kind of a little bit, uh, but the art style is great. The pixel art on the characters is really nice. Little Friends Puppy Island. Nintendo is not making a Nintendogs. Other people are doing it for him. Here you go, takes the idea, puts it on a whole island, gives you a whole lot more to do. I think that's pretty cool. The Guardian of Nature. This is another big standout for me. Looks really cute, really pretty. It's nature, it's trees, it's mushrooms, it's big animals. I love it. Really, really into this. Town Seek seems to just be kind of a exploration journal-y kind of... I don't really know. Really nice visual style though. Looks cool. Feed All Monsters. Looks cute. Simple little, little one screen puzzle game. Got a few other monsters. Yeah, looks all right. Manita's Kitchen. Little T-Rex with a pizza shop. Why not? Just why not? It's 2023. These are the kind of games we're making. And I love it. Botany Manor, I think this is another one we saw in a Nintendo presentation. Um, looks great. Just really, really peaceful. It's all about plants and stuff. Shine me up. Solar Punk. It's like a farm sim, except a little bit more high tech. You can automate things, but you're automating them using wind and water and sunlight and stuff. I think that is very cool. While the iron's hot, you play as a blacksmith. You get to do smithing, but then there's other like cool, like fun, characters and cutscenes and things. Looks very interesting. Wildflowers, um, art style doesn't really appeal to me too much. I, anytime you have like a farming sim kind of thing, if it's 3D graphics, I don't know, it's gotta do a lot to look right for me. A Highland Song, looks cool. Beautiful art, apparently your the gameplay is tied to the music as well. Very neato. Sushi Ben, VR game, making sushi, funny character stuff. Looks cute. Snuffkin, Melody of Moomin Valley. Still looking great. Love that art style. Looks so pleasant. So nice. The star named Eos. Very similar <laughs> to a game we saw earlier. It's all like memories and you're taking pictures and doing puzzles in your room. Yeah, really very similar, but you know what? No, no problem with that. Both games look really good. Fall of Porcupine. Love the art style. Love all the animal characters. Looks very cute. Story of Seasons, A Wonderful Life. It's it's another one that it's, it's probably great, but 3D farming sims. Yeah, it's just, it doesn't, I, I need pixels. <laughs> I need like nice 2D art. Something about it just doesn't appeal to me. I don't know. Tiny bookshop. You run like a tiny little mobile bookshop. Looks, very cute. Wood plus weather or wooden weather. 
Uh, looks, I, I really, I do like the art style. I like just the look of it. It's just very silly. You know, it's like you're playing with toys, little toy people in a little toy place. Um, gameplay wise, I don't know if it really appeals to me. Just kind of like meeting these little goals, but I don't know. It's it's a cute idea and with a really, really nice style. Getting a lot of crossover with a lot of these. Now, instead of uh, <laughs> instead of cats and uh, tea, there's a cat cafe. Um, no, seriously though, when I compare the games, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I just these are all good ideas. Uh, I like this one. I like all the different animals. Uh, they seem to have very very cute designs. Sopa, I still don't really know what the game is. I, I don't know what the gameplay is like. It's just, it's like soup, but it's also just all of this stuff and it's, she's telling a story, all this interesting visuals, but like, I, I am interested. I wanna know what's going on. It looks very cool. Just lots of really, just fun visual stuff. Tracks of thought, mystery, you're on a train, lots of dialogue, it's bugs, it's cute. Looks very nice. Go Go Town looks interesting. I'm like, I'm trying to figure out exactly what the game's thing is. It seems to be like kind of like city sim kind of thing and it's relaxing, but it's also about how everything is being automated and it's about drones. So I don't know if that's like the, that's exactly what it's going for, but uh, it's interesting though. I, I kind of want to find out more about it. Kato, uh, some kind of like physics puzzler kind of thing, but your cat looks pretty funny. Let's Revolution looks like a kind of a strategy kind of thing with cards on a board, uh, really cool visual style. I really don't know exactly how you play, but uh, it's interesting. Diluvian wins, you're, you're building stuff. You got cute animal characters. Don't exactly know uh, much more beyond that, but I like the cute animal characters. Ducky's delivery service, you're a little duck and you're like delivering stuff, a little propeller. Come on, that's cute. Tall trails, you're a funny little person and I guess you're just climbing around and exploring. I, I'm down, yeah. Petite Island, I would like to know more about like what the ultimate point is, uh, but it does look very cute. Quilts and Cats of Calico, uh, probably not my kind of thing, but I think it's really cool to take like a board game and make a really cool, funky, visual video game version of it. Pizza Possum, I have no idea what's going on. Are you making pizza? Are you just running around? There's like animals. I don't know, it looks hectic. I like the style. I like the animals. The Last Alchemist. That's another one I really like. It, it's in the sizzle reels. These last ones are all really fast. You don't get to see much, but I'm really interested to see more. Last Alchemist looks pretty cool. Fishbowl seems to be going for something specific, but in this quick sizzle reel, I really can't tell that much. You got a little sorting thing. You got mini games. Um, I do like the pixel art. Mirth Island. Why am I such a sucker for just the cute animals? I really, really love the, the style of the characters in this. I'm not into how, like, a lot of these games, just a lot of mini games. I don't really like to do just mini games, so I don't know how into this game I would be. It looks like a lot of them. That style's great, though. Garden Life looks a little bit more realistic as, like, a garden sim, so I don't think I'm into it. Um, it does look pretty, though. Sonya seems to be a story about being kids. I don't know much beyond that. Uh, very unique style though. March of Shrooms, definitely gotta look into this one. You lead the, the shroom evolution. you're just a bunch of little mushrooms just running around like an army. Looks very interesting. Toaster ball, where it's like volleyball or basketball, hitting a ball back and forth, but your toaster's popping up the toast to hit it. That's And the way it zooms out and you see the huge crowd, that's incredibly funny. Town frame, uh, you're kind of like designing towns. It's a puzzle game. You gotta like match the description. It looks like a really uh, interesting little idea. Window garden looks really nice. I, it's another one I, I don't know if I'm into, but uh, I can definitely appreciate what they're going for. It looks, uh, there's a lot going on on screen. Word factory, really not the kind of game that I can figure out by looking at this trailer, uh, but it's really just interesting. These factories pumping out letters to the words. I, I really, yeah, I'm interested to, know more about this one. Kind of learn how it works. Looks fun. Life After Magic, probably not my kind of thing, but I like the art. Athenian Rhapsody. I also really like the art on this one. It, the trailer barely shows uh, anything, but I, I would like to see more. It looks very, uh, very, uh, just striking. They ended with Fields of Mystery. I see this, th that's, that's the farming sim I want. The, the cute little <laughs> pixel graphics. Um, it seems nice. I, I do like the whole, like, kind of 80s anime style and uh, they seem to be leaning pretty hard into like the the romance angle so that's fun it looks like a nice game okay so i'm gonna jump around a little bit here future games show and pc gaming show i'm not gonna go through the whole thing again just just too many i'll hit some highlights i'll just 
give, give you a few highlights. We got a real good look at Lords of the Fallen. This game is shaping up to be something really, really cool. Obviously very, I mean, it, it seems like a Souls-like, I don't know about like the individual mechanics or whatever, but it, it seems to be that way. It's dark fantasy. The monsters look amazing. This time we get to see some combat and apparently it's got like a whole light world, dark world thing and the realities are kind of blending together. And when you die, you go to the dark world. That is very intriguing. I'm very into that. I am... I'm really looking forward to this game. I really don't know anything about the original, but just purely based on trailers, this looks cool. So at first I thought this was a trailer for Blasphemous 2 and I got all excited and then uh, no, it turns out it's just a different, just exceedingly gorgeous pixel art, gothic horror game. Yeah, cool. Last Faith, guess I'm putting that one on my list too. <laughs> Bring them on. Give me a million of them. Looks so cool. Okay, really, really, really intensely unhappy that this is a meta quest game, but VR Wallace and Gromit based on a grand day out. Oh my gosh. That look like in like stop motion style. That's so cool. Okay, you want to talk about a game that just instantly, just right away got onto my list. Leica Age Through Blood. Mouse in the motorcycle, but like hardcore gritty. <laughs> it's like post-apocalypse. You're riding a motorcycle around, but you're shooting. It's bullet time. It's animals. Cool monsters. I am into that. Layers of Fear, previously known as Layers of Fears, not to be confused with Layers of Fear. <laughs> I still I still don't know what the game is. Is it a remake? It's like a something to do with first, I don't know, whatever. I, I'm just I'm just here to say that I'm weirdly fascinated by these games and they're kind of boring, but they're kind of cool. And I'm kind of the, the, you know, really good budget, but they're kind of boring. I don't know, we'll see about this one. I'll play it someday. Enchanted Portals, interesting to see this one again. It, you know, a few years ago, they put out a trailer and everyone gave it a lot of flack for being just basically just Cuphead. Um, it seems like they've leaned into some slightly new ideas. Uh, it shows like a part where instead of being like old cartoon style, it's like Tim Burton style. I'm like, okay, like I, that's kind of, a th I wish they would have shown off more styles or something if that's what they're going for. But it's, it's kind of nice to see that they're trying to do something a little bit different. I suppose. SteamWorld build, looking good. The SteamWorld team, they do really, really good work. They're pretty darn consistent. Uh, Pretty darn excited for this one. Good to get another little look. I'm gonna play it. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm gonna play it. Town building, then like mining, kind of dungeon crawling. It just looks really interesting. New Cycle is kind of an interesting take on the city building genre. It's kind of like, it's not during a big age of civilization and it's not after rebuilding after an apocalypse or, or on a new planet or whatever. It's kind of like, during a bad thing that's happening. There's been a big solar flare and the world is like kind of destroyed. And so it's got a very dark kind of tone, kind of futuristic. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. I haven't quite seen that in like a city builder to my knowledge. Ruffy and the Riverside, put that one in the unique department. Just interesting art style, just interesting looking main character, some kind of weird like swapping mechanic where you're just swapping things, I guess. I don't even quite get it, but uh, wow, just looks really interesting. Fretless looks really cool. I, I guess a I, turn-based RPG kind of thing. Maybe there's turn-based combat, but then there's like mini games. I don't know, but it's like, it's music. It's battle of the bands. It's cool, like music-based monsters. It's pixel art looks very cool. Rekka seems to be a, like a Baba Yaga simulator. There's a chicken leg house. And then you like meticulously build your own house that gets chicken legs and i don't know what the point is <laughs> i really don't know what the point of the game is. i'm i'm curious about this game if anything just because i'm like what's the game that's what you would i don't know reveal kind of your standard first person psychological horror kind of thing nothing really super jumped out about it but it still looks good got my eye on it pacific drive like a weird post-apocalypse monster movie kind of thing but like you've got a car and you're just constantly just altering it and upgrading it and stuff. Looks like a really cool idea. Now highlights from PC Gaming Show. We got Ebenezer and the Invisible World. Christmas Carol Metroidvania. I mean, we got a Pinocchio Souls-like, so yeah, fine. <laughs> 
Dorf looks really cool, just like mainly because it recreates that old style of like the the pre-rendered sprites with like old RTSs. I think that looks very cool. Fortune's Run doesn't look like my kind of game, but uh, love that art style. Super cool. Jorel's Brother and the Most Important Game of the Galaxy. It looks like a just a, it, it looks like a point and click. Art style is really interesting. It all looks very nice. Earthless. I wish it showed more about like the game itself. But I will say that painterly art style in the cutscene, so cool. My Friendly Neighborhood, it's a mix of like survival horror meets Sesame Street, which I mean, that that's a pretty great idea. Main thing I wanna say about it though, is I feel like this voice sounds familiar. Raise the curtain, bring up the lights. The neighborhood is coming to town. Do I know that guy? Nah, we got a few more showcases. Now we're on to Xbox. Started off, finally got a look at Fable. Finally a new Fable. I only played the first one way back in the day. And uh, it was a good time. I know a lot of people have been waiting for this. Uh, the trailer's pretty funny, the whole thing. It's interviewing the guy, but it turns out he's a giant. And then there's a whole gameplay sequence where the giant is trying to kill the character. It's pretty clever. Any game that lean, I mean, I know Fable was very silly, but any game that leans really hard into the humor like this, it's probably gonna be hit or miss for me. So we'll see how it turns out, but I don't know, there's some interesting stuff in the trailer. So this, yeah, this presentation really, really heavy on the cinematic animated trailers with no gameplay, which is really unfortunate um, because South of Midnight, I really, really want to know what kind of game that is because the art style and the animation in this trailer, just phenomenal. Really, really grabs you. Star Wars Outlaws, cinematic trailer with no gameplay, so I don't even know what kind of game it is, but, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I got nothing because that's all, that's all I had to go off of. It's nothing. So Xbox has the. I know I'm getting pretty snarky here, but Xbox has this this great way of like taking devs who do cool single player games and then being like, hey, how about make a multiplayer game that I, that Arlo doesn't care about. It's unfortunate. I guess it's not unfortunate if you like multiplayer games. But yeah, 33 Immortals. I mean, it's a cool idea. There's just a lot of warriors on screen at once. It's a uh, I don't know, it's cool. It's got a cool visual style to it. Payday 3, definitely not my kind of thing, uh, but I will say it's it's pretty impressive that they're making these like kind of, these very intricate bank heist games. There's a lot of moving parts and I think that's cool. Persona 3, reload. I'm not a Persona fan, but I know a lot of other people are. So, cool. Oh, we finally, finally got a real look at Avowed. Obsidian, they did their own version of Fallout, now they're doing their own version of Elder Scrolls, and I'm very excited. I will say, I think in this trailer, there's not, it really does kind of look like, it's, I don't want to say generic, but pretty basic fantasy fare. There's not a lot about it that like jumps out at me visually. However, it's gonna come down to the gameplay and the story and the writing and the characters and stuff, and they are very capable of doing all of that very well, so I'm extremely excited to try this out. Sea of Thieves is getting a Legend of Monkey Island thing, and uh, I haven't played any Monkey Island games, but how cool for Monkey Island fans that it's been getting just so much love, like just this old adventure game series, just... There's a whole lot to enjoy. Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 and stuff coming to it. Those darn visuals, that is impressive. So we get another look at Senua's Saga Hellblade 2. I actually finally played the first one semi-recently and I thought it was pretty, it was really good in a lot of ways, but I was kind of torn on it. So I'm a little less excited for this one now, but those graphics and that performance though, that's, oh my gosh, that's next level. Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. Didn't I already talk about a Like a Dragon game? I lose track. Are there multiple? I don't know. I don't, I haven't played this series, but he naked, it funny. I like that that's how they introduced the game. Just nothing to do with the game or the, just the gameplay or anything. It's just this funny thing. Fallout 76, Atlantic City. I Fallout 76, for all I know, has become, slowly become the best game ever. And I would never know because, ugh, I just, just bad taste in my mouth. I <laughs> just, I pretty much ignore everything that comes out of it. Persona 5 Tactica, I gotta get into Persona just so I can enjoy all of these games and remakes and spin-offs and so I can even understand them. <laughs> Jusant, I'm not super into a lot of climbing in games. If that's like the main thing that you're doing, I'm not always into that. Um, but it also looks like you're exploring a really cool looking world. So yeah, I'm interested. Still Wakes the Deep. 
Chinese room? Yeah. We're getting a lot of high budget horror. <laughs> it's really cool. Dungeons of Hinterburg. I don't think I'm into the gameplay, but that world does look very, very vibrant. I absolutely love how successful City Skylines has become. It's just such a great story. <laughs> and so now City Skylines 2 looks, I really don't, I, I don't know if I've ever played a city building game. I've always wanted to. Maybe I'll play this one. It looks really, really nice. We had Metaphor, Rave Fantasio. Is it Persona? Uh, it looks like it's from the Persona, and it looks like a Persona. I see, this is what I'm talking about. I don't understand any of this. See, this is what I was talking about earlier. The Banner Saga people do these like amazing single player story driven RPGs and now it's a multiplayer game. I, they must be doing what they want to do. I, I can't complain too much, but it's weird. <laughs> Clockwork Revolution, definitely got to keep my eye on that one. Clearly very uh, Bioshock inspired. Very, it's, it, yeah, it didn't show any real gameplay, but it showed a lot of like concepts and visuals and stuff. And uh, visually it looks very, very interesting, very steampunky and cool. Give it a good story and good performances and stuff. And this really could be one to watch. So then they did the Starfield Direct. Um, I watched some of it, not all of it. I kind of want to be at least a little bit in the dark about the game. I do want to try it. I can't say anything that I haven't said before. I don't know if I have faith in, in uh, Bethesda anymore. I don't know. It's been so long since they've made that kind of game that I think we're all just holding our breath to see, like, do they still have it? Will Elder Scrolls in Space be everything that I always wanted from Elder Scrolls in Space? I don't know, but it's got a heck of a lot of potential. They showed off a lot of interesting stuff, a lot of deep ship design and just a lot of stuff. It looks cool. <laughs> now we got Ubisoft Forward opened up with the Just Dance as they tend to do. On the one hand, it's kind of nice that they scaled down the production. It's just like some people dancing. On the other hand though, I do miss Dubstep Panda. So we finally got a real look at the Avatar game, Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. Uh, looks kind of cool. You, you play as a Navi and so you got guns and you got like bow and arrow and stuff and you're flying around and there's, I guess, parkour and shooting and yeah, I don't know. I'm not like a big avatar person, but like it looks kind of cool. Visually looks pretty interesting. I mean, like it's avatar. So obviously just the world, it's avatar world. So that's pretty neato. Saw something on Captain Laserhawk, a blood dragon remix. So it's blood dragon. Was that a Far Cry thing? But there's an Assassin Creed in it. It's a show. Yeah, I don't know. Sorry. So Assassin's Creed Nexus VR. We're getting a VR Assassin's Creed game. All I have to say about this is companies, if you don't have gameplay to show in your VR game or you don't want to show it, don't give us a fake animated that's like, look, it's like this. It's not like this, but it's kind of just don't. Just don't do it. It's a waste of everyone's time. Then they gave us a taste of an open world Assassin's Creed game on mobile. Can you imagine the microtransactions? Just can you fathom? Can you fathom the kinds of things that that game is gonna want you to buy? Yves Jouimo is drooling right now. So they showed off Assassin's Creed Mirage at the PlayStation Showcase. And yeah, it, I guess it does seem to just be kind of a return to form, kind of a return to the style of the first few. So I don't know, that's pretty cool before it went all Ubisoft. I'm kind of curious to know what they're going to do with the gameplay to make it like a return to the original, but not just like, oh, but where's all the extra features we've become accustomed to? Yeah, it's it's kind of an interesting challenge they got. Okay, so now we got an actual look at Star Wars Outlaws. Now, see now, yeah, I'm on board now. Seems to be like open world, seamless. You're just going from area to area. You're flying up into space and going around. You got shooting and stealth and vehicle it's just kind of a big star wars adventure game and i bet if i were a star wars fan <laughs> i say that a lot i i'd be pretty darn excited about it looks cool so that's it for the ubisoft forward couldn't help but notice no skull and bones <laughs> that game that they keep saying is coming and they finally started showing footage and then and they say it's coming and they all got delayed again but it's coming next year it, nothing there was a musical number that's it that's it, that's that's all you could give us for your once a year, okay. All right, and finally, 
we have the Capcom Showcase. Path of the Goddess is an interesting one. It, it seems to be, uh, we only get like little tiny bits of gameplay. It seems to be kind of like a hack and slash, uh, but then the little voiceover thing says it's kind of a mix of action and strategy. It looks like you're kind of like, I don't know, you're possessing these people or something. Uh, I guess they're gonna fight for you. Um, yeah, I don't know, but it, uh, it looks very uh, visually interesting. All the weird hands and all the cool Oni and stuff. Very, uh, rich. Very visually rich. Mega Man X Dive Offline. Uh, a Mega Man game that kind of brings in all the different Mega Man X stuff and characters. There's like a hundred characters and loads of stages and you could upgrade. Like, that's all, that's all cool, but it's a mobile game, so <laughs> it's just kind of like, okay. All the, oh yeah, all the upgrades, all the characters, all the stages. Yeah, I, I guess I... I think I know how this is gonna go, so, yeah. Resident Evil 4 VR already uh, talked about this when they revealed it in the PlayStation Showcase, but they confirmed here that it's free. Of course it's free. Of course it's free. Of course Capcom just gives us an <laughs> extra mode for free. Of course they do. Most companies want you to keep buying new stuff, and Capcom is just, here are more reasons to replay the stuff you already got. It's incredible. Prag Pragmata is a game that I just keep forgetting exists, because they like they only give these little snippets <laughs> year after year, and they even have a funny little joke. She's uh, She's draw you saw it, it's there. So they told us it's delayed again. I didn't even know it was delayed. There was anything to delay. I still barely even know what the game is. I, if there was other gameplay, it's some other thing. I did not see it. So uh, it was <laughs> nice to get little bits of gameplay here. I'm pretty interested. I really think this game looks cool visually. It's just a fun idea. You're like big armored guy taking care of the little girl. Um, I'm interested to see what this game has in store. Ghost Trick Phantom Detective, I've said before, I know nothing about this game, but everyone is crazy about it. And uh, here they announced that it's getting a demo, which is perfect. It really it just, these kind of like weird, kind of obscure games, you gotta have a demo, because then you make everyone fall in love with it. And I hope that I fall in love with it. I can't wait to play it. Love the concept, love everything I've seen about it so far. It looks super interesting. Apollo Justice Ace Attorney Trilogy, every time they do a thing with Ace Attorney, anything, people freak out. So I, I'm very, very, very pleased for everyone here. Still have not tried an Ace Attorney game. I want to, I have like the original trilogy. I'm gonna play it and I'm sure I'm gonna love it. I gotta get around to that. Capcom Town, bizarre. <laughs> Still, like, we finally got to look at it. Just, I don't know, like interactive websites with like all like info and stuff. It's very like, early 2000s. I don't know why they're doing this, but I'm all for it. Exoprimal, uh, this went into a little bit more of the story and stuff, um, but nothing's really changed for me. It still doesn't really appeal to me. Like, it's it's cool visually, just fighting all those weird dinosaurs and stuff, but uh, I don't know, just not really my thing. Then they ended with a little bit deeper look into Dragon's Dogma 2. Didn't really like give a lot of new footage, but just kind of talked about it a bit. And yeah, it does look really good. Like it's making me want to boot up Dragon's Dogma again and give it another chance. Cause it, I mean, not even a chance. I like, I enjoyed what I played. I just, I put it down and I got distracted, but like, I don't know. It looks really good. The original is really, really good from what I played, and this looks like it's just gonna be better, so there you go. I will say it was not the strongest showing, just cause like most of the interesting stuff had been revealed in other shows. This was just kinda like talking about stuff we already knew about, not really a lot of like reveals. So yeah, it wasn't like super great or anything, but like, I don't know, it, was, it showed games that are cool. So there you go, it wins. Well, my friends, that's it. I just spent like seven hours watching trailers. Pretty, pretty tired. I really hope, <laughs> really hope anybody enjoys this. And it's already a long video. So I, I mean, general thoughts on Summer Game Fest. It was cool. I liked how there were all the presentations were kind of boiled down to over the course of like a week or whatever, like E3 style. It was pretty cool. I don't think any one company had like an incredibly strong showing and Nintendo wasn't there at all. So, but it was like fine. I don't know. I don't know. I got, I got no opinions on the overall, whatever. End of video. See you later. See you next year. <laughs>